So adding in a SARM that's way less androgenic than dihydrotestosterone may be doing more harm than good. What is up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. ASMR sip is some black coffee. ASMR spritz, intelligent iron. Hear your noises. All right, like this video so more people see it. The title is accurate. SARMs make you weaker. So I'm gonna be doing this topic because SARMs had such a great binding affinity that they can dock off dihydrotestosterone. This is where people get mixed up and say they feel worse on SARMs than they do off them. Certain SARMs, the anabolic ones that aren't androgenic. Remember, dihydrotestosterone is super androgenic. Dihydrotestosterone is when you watch two UFC fighters. That's why their CNS can operate at that speed. They have insane androgen receptor signaling response via anxiety, and they're using dihydrotestosterone to be able to do feints. I mean, we just saw Sugar Sean O'Malley fight. He's the king of doing a feint, feint, stepping in and out. That's all coming from dihydrotestosterone. If I remove the dihydrotestosterone level from his body, if I put Sugar Sean O'Malley on finasteride or dutastride if he, won, if he had hair loss and wanted to regrow his hair, and I replaced the androgen with with something else. I'll have Andrew throw up a little snippet of more plates, more dates. I was trying a synthetic bioidentical pro progestin to um, activate, activate the progesterone receptor a little bit and get some anti-androgen activity as well as um, essentially, essentially function without any endogenous testosterone or DHT and in turn use a more anabolic and tissue selective um, AAS as my sort of like hormonal foundation, which also happens to 5-alpha reduce into a less uh, androgenic metabolite in scalp, prostate, and other um, androgen-affected tissues that normally have a high concentration of DHT. More Plates, More Dates has proven this time and time again by showing him rely on different androgens. You know, he relied on DECA only, so he relied on dihydronandrolone. He relied on SARMs for a little bit. He relied on only testosterone, and he showcases that the central nervous system can still operate on other androgens just fine, as long as you don't have the fucking syndrome. That's what I'm trying to get at with the SARMs, is that they are booting off the dihydrotestosterone because their binding affinity is so insane, and you're no Noticing that androgenic level drop on your CNS. I've noticed this too. When I did AC262 with no test base and everything, I felt weaker because AC262 is not that powerful. However, the binding affinity is super powerful and it's only anabolic, not very androgenic. And I did notice that my CNS felt weaker on the SARM and that's because the dihydrotestosterone level is being altered at the androgen receptor level because unlike most steroids, the SARMs can directly compete with DHT and it seems like theoretically it's winning remember I don't know this specifically I'm just assuming that if we're all noticing this then that would be the case with some of these SARMs causing you to be weaker that being said when I added an S23 only which is probably more androgenic if not the same androgenic level as dihydrotestosterone, I did notice a big boost in strength, a big boost in vigor. It felt like my CNS was overstimulated. Same with R8E140, it feels like my CNS is overstimulated. That's the thing that you have to be concerned about. Meaning, if you have a high natural testosterone score, that means you have a high DHT level being active on the androgen receptors. If you add in a minuscule SARM and it starts interacting and booting off the DHT, you're going to notice that and you're going to feel weaker. SARM shine, if you had lower testosterone, 
and then you had more skeletal AR that needed saturated, the SARM comes in there and saturates those extra AR. If you already have good natural testosterone and you're adding in one of these little minuscule SARMs like AC262, Austrian S4, some of the ones that aren't androgenic and only basically anabolic, you could notice a difference in strength. Personally, on 40 milligrams of Austrian a day, I got strong as fuck. I'm gonna just be honest. I was cutting, I continued moving my strength volume up. I was very shocked that cycle is documented on camera. You can see I got stronger. You can see my look up better with Austrian. I can tell you I'm not trying to advertise for SARMs here. I like steroids too, and I'll directly go into bashing with AC262. I got weaker. I 100% noticed the difference of having less dihydrotestosterone by adding in all this AC262 because I was dosing it super high and getting weaker. The more I was dosing, the weaker I was getting, and that's because AC262 is not as androgenic as dihydrotestosterone However, when it comes to competing for docking at this androgen receptor, the AC262 directly competes with dihydrotestosterone, where in the natural hierarchy, testosterone always loses the dihydrotestosterone at the AR docking. That's the thing that's really messing with the system is that these binding affinities are so insane to these SARMs. They're theoretically not selective outside the dosages in the studies. And then you're having all this spillover effect and you don't really know why it's causing you to get weaker and why people are getting stronger. This is what you have to take into consideration. Sometimes adding in the minuscule SARM isn't worth it if you already have a good natural testosterone, aka a good natural dihydrotestosterone interaction on your androgen receptors. If you're lowering that dihydrotestosterone, you're obviously shrinking your prostate and you're obviously going to have less hair loss, most likely, if you're DHT prone. So the SARM can't come in there, offset hair loss and offset prostate growth. But when we're talking about making your central nervous system weaker or stronger, the dihydrotestosterone makes your central nervous system stronger it's more androgenic than the SARMs, you may notice that in the gym. If you have a mid to shitty natural testosterone and you have skeletal AR that aren't even being used, you may notice that these people get a big benefit of putting the SARM in because there's not like much spillover. There's not much bullshit going on. It just saturates more of the androgen receptors. Those androgen receptors that are docked with the SARMs aren't as androgenic as the dihydrotestosterone, but there's more than enough to go around. I'm just saying these variable setups because this is what's actually going on. It's like SARMs do not technically make you weaker. It's just like if you want dihydrotestosterone, if you want the UFC fighter, you know, reaction time and the power in the gym, 100% switching that androgen out at the androgen level with something that's less androgenic, you're going to notice. More plates, more dates. He says he notices the difference when he adds in something that's way less androgenic than DHT, but overall he's biohacking to stop hair loss. That's his goal and he accomplishes that. I'm saying with these SARMs, that same thing could occur where you're bumping DHT off, causing spillover, the SARM is less androgenic than DHT, you're gonna feel that on your CNS. I'm also saying that there's SARMs that are just as powerful, if not more powerful than DHT on the androgenic level. If you inject LGD4033 or take S23, remember there's no real benefit of injecting S23 if anyone's watching. There's no benefit. Like the oral and injectable bioavailability are basically the same. If you take S23, you will feel more stimmed up with your CNS. You will feel a higher androgen drive. You will have faster reaction times. You will have faster, fast twitch muscle reactions. This is why this is why all these MMA fighters are DMing me using RID 140. It's booting their DHT off. It's just as androgenic, if not more androgenic, they get way better central nervous system firing, they don't gas out, they have more strength, they have more mental aggression, there's more dopaminergic firing, they are stronger. If I switched out the RAD for AC262, which is more anabolic, less androgenic than DHT, they would get weaker, they would feel more fatigued, they would have their prostate shrink, 
they would notice all the benefits of maybe hair regrowth and everything from having less DHT interaction, but they wouldn't, it wouldn't be good for performance. That's what I'm getting at with these SARMs is that yes, SARMs, a lot of them are weaker than dihydrotestosterone on an androgenic level. They still compete at the androgen receptor via binding affinity very competitively, and you can be skewing the base level androgen that's interacting at your central nervous system. That's the thing. And Derek has proven that time and time again that you can use other androgens besides dihydrotestosterone, which your central nervous system can rely upon. So he does notice a difference in performance, but if he's after hair loss or other people after shrinking the prostate, SARMs make sense in that category. If you're looking to have performance benefits, adding in a light minuscule SARM may be detrimental in the fact that it's fucking up your DHT level that's interacting. That's the base level androgen that runs a male. It's not testosterone, it's dihydrotestosterone. And dihydrotestosterone always beats testosterone. It's one of those things where I want this information out there for the younger guys to know that if you're bumping your dihydrotestosterone around, which I was when I was younger, but I was also doing Clomid. I was always doing something that was jacking up my natural testosterone to never not have DHT. But if you did SARMs only, you could be fucking with your penile development from fucking with this dihydrotestosterone level all the time. And I would definitely be very wary that dihydrotestosterone is in direct correlation with your penile development and you want that dihydrotestosterone level to be interacting on the AR at the highest level in your pubescent years, for sure. So adding in a SARM that's way less androgenic than dihydrotestosterone may be doing more harm than good. Not all SARMs are like that. If you add an S23, you will notice a direct performance benefit. It, it, will, it will just literally be almost, if not the same. During my syndrome, during my disease, S23 was one of the few SARMs I could feel, one of the few synthetic androgens I could feel. That's literally how powerful it is. That's the androgenic level that's matching the dihydrotestosterone level. A lot of these SARMs don't match the androgenic level of dihydrotestosterone. Dihydrotestosterone is really important when it comes to fast twitch muscle fibers and using strength and or reaction. I will see you guys in my next video.